Hi guys, this is Deepesh from Freshersworld.com. Welcome to our YouTube channel on jobs and careers. Today we'll be dealing with module 3 or an Android training. So let's start with Android Studio today. We'll see the latest version of the Android Studio, the project structure of an Android Studio, and what are the features in the latest Android Studio 2.2. So let's start. From the link here, I'll be able to connect to developers.android.com. That is the main hub of your Android development, which is supported by Google. Clicking on this link, I'll be able to redirect to the corresponding website where I'll have the option to install Android Studio based on the operating system. Since I have Windows 8 installed, I get a download option for my Windows system. So just click on this link, you'll be able to download, just click on next, next, next in the installation, you'll be able to install the Android Studio. Since I have my Android Studio already installed, so let me start. I just go to my search on Windows 8, I'll just search Android Studio, okay? I'll just click on it, oh, my Android Studio is getting loaded. So let me wait for two seconds, because I have 8 GB RAM installed on my PC, that should take pretty less time to load Android Studio. I have my Android Studio installed here and I have the application running. So my Android Studio is loaded. So let me start with the project structure. So coming to the project structure, you can see app, you can see manifest, you can see Java, you can see resources here in the project structure folder. So I'll be starting with manifest first. So what is a manifest file? The manifest file would be containing the information of an app such as what are the screens that are there in an app, what are the permissions that is there in an app, and what is the application name of an app. In other terms, we call that as a package name. So you can see the package name in the manifest file, the activities that have used in an application, and what are the permissions that is there for an app. Let's start with Java. On this Java, you will be able to open the screen on your editor as you are seeing it here, you have on create and some other methods that we'll be discussing later. On this, you will be able to write the codes and able to compile it and start an Android app. So on this, you have a labeled file also on the Java editor. And there is a separate labeled section in the resource folder that I'll be telling you sometime after this. So on this code editor, you will be able to write the codes or put some actions on the Java codes for the corresponding operations to be done. So I have similar set of Java classes, which would be helping in order to perform different operations or opening different screen as you're seeing it here. Next, I'll be going to the resource folder. The resource folder would be having four to five folders. So what are these folders? All the resource folders would be consisting of labeled file, drawable files, string files, and etc. So let me start with the drawable files. In the drawable files, as you can see, I have a lot of images that I have put. Where are these images and what are they used for? In this drawable file, I have images for my app. So all the images that has to be in an app should be placed under drawable folders. So coming to the next, I have something known as a layout file. This is the file where action UI of an app is done. So once I click on this layout file, I'll be able to see many layouts here. So I have many labels in my, in my app. So we have many labels here. So once I click on a particular label, that particular UI is loaded on the editor here. As you're seeing, this is the UI that has been there in your Java file. So I come to my Java folder and I click on the Java class. You will be able to see something known as set content view here. On the set content view, I have initialized a label. So this layout would be initialized here. So this layout would be initialized here. So this is how the Java and the UI is integrated. So we have a separate Java class and we have a separate layout class. So in this layout, you will be able to drag and drop some options, something like a button, or you can put the images from the drawable folder. You have two options to do it on the layout file. One is the design and the other one is the text. You'll be able to go to the code and edit the code or you will be able to come to the design part and you will be able to design. So let me see what is the Gradle. So Gradle is the main feature of an Android Studio since it has been released. The Gradle system helps in building an app 
running an app without having to build a new APK and it has all the features to support libraries which would be more efficient in running a program. Now in this Gradle I have something known as minimum SDK, maximum SDK and all the libraries that are used for an app. So the main importance of a Gradle is to run an app without building it again and again. So this is the main feature of a Gradle and this is powered by IntelliJ AI and this is a plugin that has been given to an Android Studio. This helps in building an app based on the requirement or based on the modules, based on the features that is needed. So this is the latest and the most important that has been introduced in Android Studio. Next, we have something known as a toolbar on top of it. In the toolbar, you'll be having something known as a play, uh, play symbol. This play symbol would be helping you to run an app. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more Android videos. <laughs>
Nexus 5 and your operating system that you can change. On clicking on this, you will be able to change the device. On clicking on to the next option, you will be able to change the operating system that you want to run on the device. Once I click finish, I'll be able to create my AVD. So my AVD is available here or the emulator that is there. So on this emulator, I'll be able to click on run and my emulator gets launched. As you're seeing, it may take some time depending on the RAM size of your devices. Now, my Nexus 5 device phone is getting started, which will be almost similar to my real Nexus 5 device. Now, on my Nexus 5 device, I just want to run an application that I previously created. So let me do something like this. I'll go for my app. I'll just click on my app. On, on the toolbar, I'll just click run. So let me wait for two seconds. Yeah, my app got installed onto my Nexus device. So this is how you start a project and create an emulator and run your first project. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you.